Good morning. I'm Lance Williams with your Gainesville Sports Center. Last night, the Gators soccer team lost three to nothing in Arkansas to the number ten ranked Razorbacks. The Gators are now five five and four. Tonight, the Mississippi State Bulldogs host the number fourteen ranked Florida volleyball team. Florida is coming off a three zero sweep of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Tomorrow, the Gators football team is at South Carolina to face the Gamecocks. Coverage begins here at eleven thirty. Also in college football. Number 12 ranked UNC hosts number 25 ranked Miami. Tune in to coverage here at 8 p.m. In the NFL, all Florida teams play on Sunday. The Colts are in Jacksonville, the Dolphins host Carolina, and Tampa Bay is at home against Detroit. Bucks Lions coverage starts here at 3.30. That's your Gainesville Sports Center. I'm Lance Williams. Welcome to the Clearwater Threshers Broadcast Network. We're here live in Clearwater, Florida, 93 degrees outside. Clouds on the skyline here in Baycare Ballpark. The Clearwater Threshers 72 and 36 overall, 28 and 15 in the second half. They're hosting the Dunedin Blue Jays, who are 50 and 59 overall, 18 and 25 in the second half. They're the affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays. Hello, everybody. I'm Lance Williams here with your Threshers pregame show. Joined as always with the voice of the Clearwater Threshers, Josh Berber. For game two of this six-game series between these two teams in Pinellas County, the Threshers currently lead 1-0 after a 4-1 win yesterday. Let's go over the score in, in that ball game. It started off for Dunedin in the top of the third, Angel Del Rosario. He hit a home run out to left center field, actually fell into the bullpen, 1-0 Blue Jays. Then bottom of the fifth inning, a Jordan Virus RBI single brought home Raylan Heredia. And then a Chad Castillo ground out brought home Ryan Leach, 2-1 Threshers. Bottom of the sixth inning, Zach Arnold pounded out a home run to right center field, 3-1 Threshers. And in the bottom of the seventh inning, Chad Castillo was at the plate, and Ryan Leach was brought home by, from third on a walk. 4-1 Threshers was the score, and then two shutout innings gave them the win. So it was a quality day from the Threshers offense as they went 8 for 29 as a team. Most notably, though, Zach Arnold, three, he went 3 for 4 with a solo home run, a career-high three hits. Of course, that's not saying much as he just started his professional career, a uh, member of the 2023 draft class for the Phillies, and he had his second straight game with multiple hits. His home run was also his first professional home run. An opposite shot for Arnold. Also, Jordan Viers, he went two for three with an RBI. And Raylan Heredia, who's making his full season debut yesterday, he went one for three with a run. He looked really good. But it was really an outstanding night from the pitching. 12 strikeouts, zero walks, and just four hits allowed. And, of course, the one run. The starting pitcher was Giuseppe Velasquez, who went a career-high six innings. He allowed three hits, one earned run. And six strikeouts. Then the bullpen, Danny Wilkinson, he had one shutout inning. He allowed one hit. He had two Ks. His scoreless inning streak is now up to 20 innings. That's going back to July 3rd. Then finally out of the bullpen, Wen Hui Pond, two scoreless innings with four punch outs. The winning pitcher was Velasquez, who's now 1 0 on the year with Clearwater. And the losing pitcher was Dunedin starter, Davis Feldman, who is now 2 4. Wen Hui Pond also earned the save. His seventh of the season. Yeah, lots of action in the Florida State League. Josh starting off the Fort Myers Mighty Muscles in Palm Beach. Currently, Mighty Muscles with a three nothing lead in the bottom of the third. Then to Daytona, the Tortugas hosting the Tampa Tarpons. Tarpons with a one nothing lead, also in the bottom of the third inning. The Jupiter Hammerheads they won their game in St. Lucie four to three over the Mets in the tenth inning. And then the Lakeland Flying Tigers game in Bradenton was postponed due to rain. That's the Florida State League scoreboard here on August 16th. Back to you, Josh. Top of the third inning, still a scoreless ball game. Each team with one hit. The leadoff man back to the plate for Lakeland. That's Seth Stevenson. Flied out to center in his first at-bat in the first inning. His pitch from Estebenson Jimenez popped up high, but foul ball still in the air now it falls let's hit the defense for the Clearwater Threshers behind home plate is Jordan Disson at first Chad Castillo second Bryson Ware at short Zach Arnold and third base is Ty Penner here's the 0-1 pitch to Stevenson 
Outside breaking ball out of the glove of Disson. Now the outfield left to right, Ricardo Rosario, Amarion Boyd, and Jordan Viers is deep in right field. 1-1 one, one count now to Stevenson. The pitch, chopper over to third. That one gets past the glove of Penner. Rolling into the corner, and Stevenson going over to second and sliding there safely. The second hit of the game for Lakeland. Both are doubles. Stevenson, one for two now. Now to the plate is Christian Santana, the third baseman for Lakeland today. There's the snap. Fake handoff. Pass left side. Deflected. Intended for Jordan Richardson at the 35-yard line, but Creekside got a hand on it. Yeah, sorry to keep alluding to that pregame interview, but Chuck Bell, he said, you know, we, we got to be a little bit precautionary and just take the easy passes, but it, is, it has not been the case thus far. I suppose on that pass, which is three or so yards, but the other two 40-yard gains. All right, so second and 10 from the 38. Shotgun formations. Johnson takes a snap, throws right side. Pass caught at the 24-yard line, fighting for extra yardage, maybe an additional yard or two. Mark Kell Thompson, senior, takes it down to the 21-yard line. They're just outside the red zone, but that is a Buholtz first down. Thompson, a pretty big receiver. A lot of size on that cornerback, but Creekside is able to pull him out of bounds. Trace Johnson, the son of former Gator quarterback Doug Johnson, takes the snap. Johnson looks left and throws back right on the screen. Pass caught at the 50 to the 40 near side, 35 30, down the right sidelines, 15 10 5. Touchdown, Bu Holtz, Justin Williams. Second, actually third touchdown of the night. A lot of credit has to go to number nine. That's DJ Hicks. Just excellent blocking along the sideline. That really allowed for that long touchdown. How about this combination? Trace Johnson and Justin Williams. It's looked good so far. NBA awards are notoriously unpredictable. Each year, players break out players get hurt, and let's face it, the awards are narrative driven. Team success, voter fatigue, and other underlying storylines have a huge effect on voting. This is also the first season under the new collective bargaining agreement, meaning that to qualify for the awards, players must play at least 65 games, thus adding another element of uncertainty. Despite all this, in this video, I will be predicting this year's award winners. So that takes us to today but the Pelicans are currently 4-3, leading the league in scoring per game, and ready to compete for years to come. They also have the right to swap picks with the Lakers, who are currently 2-5. Of course, having a player like Anthony Davis to trade away is going to jumpstart your rebuild, and they were very lucky by landing Zion, but the Pels have done a phenomenal job of preparing their team for the future. The league is clearly moving towards 6-8 to 6-10 wings who can do it all, and they have that in Brandon Ingram, Trey Murphy, and Herb Jones. They also have a superstar in Zion Williamson who just needs to stay healthy, along with a plethora of picks from the AD and Drew Holiday trades. So that's the Pelicans rebuild through some great trades, hitting on draft picks, and uh, just lottery luck by landing Zion. The Pelicans really have one of the best futures in the NBA.